Thanks for checking out this video. This is the last in my B-Wing helmet series. Today I am showing you how to build up Blue Leader. This is the last of this entire series. I've got a, about four or five build-ups on video for this B-Wing set. So make sure that you click on the uh, other links in the description and visit the website and Facebook and Instagram pages to check out that whole series of these limited helmets. All right, so here we are, Blue Leader, last one. Uh, let me review this kit for you. Left and right shells, as always. This one uses an outer visor and a clear inner visor. Two decals and uh, just a small selection of the all those Greeblies I 3D modeled and printed. So this is left side, mostly left side stuff. This is right side stuff, the little mic, little piston, little cable connector. And this is your base kit. On the side, uh, I can also provide the leather trim and the tubing that you'll need and the little metal clip. Otherwise, those are commonly available materials at fabric stores and box stores. So let's go ahead and dive into Blue Leader. Okay, so this guy is silver. All of these buttons, again, I don't think I'm using all of them. All of these are going to be a charcoal. I think, every, oh, you know what? I think everything is charcoal color except the medallion and the piston are silver. Everything else here, I'm going to airbrush charcoal. These accent pieces for the visor, for the outer visor level are also silver. I mixed up about five parts black to about one part white. So I've got this really dark gray color. And as I talk about in my other tutorials, I don't like using straight black, at least at first, for the Greeblies on this. I just want them to have a little bit of a light pop. And that doesn't happen when they're straight black. Just mix a little bit of white into your black as your base coat. You can see on these shells really clearly where to trim. Just look for that defined edge. And on the back, you can see exactly where to trim, just on those lines right there. I'm not going to finish this cut straight onto that edge. I'm going to get really close and then finish those edges on a belt sander. When you're using the belt sander, it's a good idea to look on the inside surface. You can see in a little more detail where that trim line is. For some of these edges that are a little more squared off, I like to switch to my Dremel. And then you can deburr all those edges with a little sheet of sandpaper. Here's our fit. Now you're never going to have a perfect, perfect fit. We're going to be gluing this from the inside and bondoing from the inside and outside. So this will all blend, but I'm pretty satisfied with that fit right there. That's, that's pretty good. It's pretty tight. Now don't worry about the top edge. The top edge might not line up. I had to over trim a little bit. Um, a little bit on the bottom, a little bit on the top. That bondo stage will take care of that very quickly. This is really, really important. These two marks on my bench are 
five and a half, just a little bit over five and a half inches wide. That is how wide you want the cheeks apart. That does not sound right, but you want these spread apart at five and a half inches from the inside edge. That's just a little bit more. My first time when I built was a tiny bit tight, so I'm going to go a little bit proud of five and a half, something like this. So when you join that back, make sure that these aren't further apart, unless you have a really gigantic head, and you don't want to make them inside that mark right there. I tacked these two shells together off camera using extra thick super glue spray kicker. So basically I put a bead of super glue on one side, I spray kicked the other, held them together. As you can see, it's not perfect because I was holding this apart at about five and a half, but it is good enough for our next step. This will all disappear in the next 15 minutes or so. Across the seam, just kind of get it held really tight. Then what we're doing is, oops, I don't want tape in there. What we're doing is applying Bondo to that inside edge. Just in case I need to sand any of this top edge flush, I want to go very generous with the Bondo on those flat edges. Just in case we need to shave down that styrene a little bit to get it flush. Here's a trick that I've been doing for years, although I don't think I've ever shown this in a tutorial, a video tutorial. I'm using OD Regular Clear PVC Cement. And this Bondo has only been on here for about five minutes or so, so it's still a little bit tacky, which is what you want. And I'm going to liberally spread this PVC cement where the Bondo joins the styrene. Anywhere the, that Bondo is touching the styrene, this just gives it an extra, extra strong adhesion boost. This PVC cement dries pretty quickly, and once it does, you've got a really, really strong bond. There's a little bit of a bridge that has to happen here with the Bondo, so I'm going to go in a little bit thicker at the bottom and top edge, just to bridge that little bit of a difference. Sixty grit sanding sponge will take care of these contours. The seam line has completely disappeared. I'm going to give this a little bit of a polish with a thousand grit paper, and we are ready to paint. Before we paint this, we need to slot the little openings for the chin strap and I'm slotting those from the inside and then we also need to slot this groove here. I'm doing that with my cutoff wheel. I'm cleaning up these slots with a little file. If you overcut these slots, which is really easy to do, just make some Bondo, patch it in there, file it, you're good to go.
Here we have our blank for Blue Leader, all ready to paint up. And Blue Leader masking is pretty simple. We just have blue isolated on that ring at the front. That's Blue Leader right there, so just that little blue ring. And I'm, I'll be using my stretchy masking tape and my regular masking tape to isolate those areas. Here are those areas masked. And I also masked the back. There is a medium to dark green strip on the back. And here's how that looks. Let me show you real quick how I'm mixing these colors. So I've got a medium blue. And I mixed a bit of white into that. I just want to lighten this up. That looks about right. Maybe a little bit lighter. And then I'm thinning it down with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Um, just decantered into this. And it's real easy to add what you need. And by the way, when you're done with these colors, keep these. And try to do all this in one night, or, or maybe two days. But if you're leaving these paints overnight, make sure you add in a lot of ISO to keep them wet. But keep these for touch-ups. This is a bit of medium green with a little bit of olive green and a little black. Alright, that's it for the masking. That green color back here, the blue color there. I'm going to let this dry up for a little bit and unmask it and we'll move on. Let's paint this medallion. I'm going to go a little nuts here because I'm looking at this picture. It seems like there's a, a yellow quadrant, like a mustard yellow and then gray striping. So this yellow will get darker later, but I'm going to go ahead and just get bold here. From what I can tell, this is the best reference I have, is that this is yellow. There. And this medallion is, is a beveled piece. So I'm going to continue that yellow on the edge. gray. And then this piece slides right into the middle. So that I can start attaching greeblies, I'm going to darken these pits right now. I've got Next what I'll do is hand paint this vent black all these vents in here black same on the other side black okay we're gonna start attaching greeblies starting with this silver piston goes into that pit there the top pit is blank and then this guy right here next to that medallion the Yamaha button from the Wyoming helmet about right here and then this little guy about right there. There's a little button. This dude is going to live here. It has a little bit of a silver dome, so I'll, I'll paint that silver after it's in place. I notice there's cables running on both sides of this helmet to the back, so I need a connection spot for that, and that is what this little piece is going to be. Pretty much right in the middle. And if you look really closely at that left cheek, there's a clip popping out right there. So you're looking at this, and there's this little clip. These are super cheap on Amazon. I'm going to straighten out that prong and drill a hole, kind of get it secured inside and outside, and it's going to live right, right at the corner, 
right like this so that when you're looking at it this way it kind of like it sticks out okay here's that little clip I drilled a hole I, I straightened out that prong Let's see if I can get this so you can see it and I've got it bent in there and epoxied right in there that'll never come loose let's get these decals on here first thing I'm gonna do is really press it onto that contact paper you can use a squeegee credit card I've got a scraper handy here from my 3d printer I really want to press that in so when I peel that backing paper off it all comes out in one piece same thing on these guys so that when we peel off this contact that entire graphic comes off in one piece and this is transparent so I can see exactly where this is going and I have this designed to lay down right here just burnish these edges just a little bit oops this guy's not push down hard enough there we go peel away that paper and there's your graphic okay same thing with these guys this is really bright green I'm gonna show you a trick to tone this down the trick now is to get this green decal faded down I've got flat white Tamiya, and I'm just going to, and I've, I've got the rest of this helmet kind of just blocked off. I've got a nice wall here. So I'm going to very lightly start hitting this and make it fade away. You can see it's a lot more subtle now. I'll be creating the outer perimeter leather trim using this faux leather. This is a laser cut piece of, of faux leather and this tubing and spray 77 for a really detailed look at how that's done. Check the link in the description for the Y-Wing tutorial and I go over that step in great detail. The leather trim on blue leader is super orange so I'm just going straight to me orange and I'm just gonna make these pop before we start getting to work weathering this we're going to install this leather trim so essentially with the seam line inside I'm gonna tuck it away it starts here tucked in right there it's gonna come across right at that edge just like this it's gonna come over the cheek it's gonna come in and it's gonna tuck away right about that where that line is right there let's start in on the visor for this blue leader visor is two shells there's an outer shell that's opaque styrene you can see there's a trim line already drawn on that part for you and there is a clear under shell and you've got a trim line drawn on this trim this out with shears or on a bandsaw a dremel whatever tool you'd like to use I'm gonna start the trim with cutting shears and then finish with a dremel on both these parts
Here's our resulting outer frame. I'm going to paint this silver along with these plastic laser cut trim parts. Here we are with the trimmed out clear visor, the bottom piece, and the frame. It's all trimmed out. I'll be attaching this to that with hot glue to tack it and then epoxy behind it to secure it. And it's got to flex a little bit, so the most important part right now is if you look at Blue Leader, this is the part I'm most excited about in this tutorial besides the weathering. As you can see that there's a yellow section of that clear visor, see-through yellow. How do we do that? I've been using this for a couple months, but I've never shown it in tutorials. Carlon stained glass. Canary yellow. And I will show you how this works. Just on one side. There's a little bit of overspray on the, on the other parts. I'll do that after, but I want a little bit of a, a heavier tint on that top portion, so I'm just going to go real light. And that might be enough. Just real light, and this will this will become less opaque as it dries. Pinstriping comes next. I've got two pinstripe bands on the outer shield and silver pinstripe bands just below the yellow. You can buy this pinstripe at any automotive store. Looking good. I'm going to be using hot glue on the edges of the clear visor all the way across. I'm going to do one side first. Make sure that you seal off these edges with epoxy. It's the only thing that's going to make this stable. You can use JB Weld, but use something other than hot glue and super glue. Next I'm attaching the trim. You've got this piece here that lays down on the top of that shape. It's a little bit long so you can trim. And then this guy meets it like this. It is the finished visor. You can see I started some of the flathead screws in there with nuts behind on the sides. And the rest I'm going to install using one inch flathead screws and nuts. I have all my screw holes for the visor pre-drilled. It is time to get to my favorite part of this, taking this off and weathering. I'm using speaker wire for the cabling. One end that attaches on one side of this helmet has a split like this. And this, this is vinyl cabling it doesn't react very well to standard spray paint, so I'm using Tamiya Black just to get these guys the right color. It's a very lightly weathered helmet, by the way, so I'm going to be very light with airbrushing a very light gray. I might go dark in a few areas, but I'm not going to go too, too crazy with that airbrush. Very minimal weathering on this. And I'm also, to get a little bit of tonage happening, I'll be using pastel chalks. And today I've got a set of General's Dark Pastels and Earth Tone and Rust Pastels. There's a little bit of warmth happening in this helmet around the cheek areas. So that will be applied with pastels. I do want to get this medallion a little bit darker though. To give this a little more character, I'm going to give a, put a few more scratches back here. We don't know what the back of this helmet looks like. No photo references of it. But let's try a few pastels. I've got a uh, sort of a dark charcoal pastel. I've got a rust earthy 
pastel. I'm just going to dip a paper towel into this and start rubbing where I want to add a little bit more flavor. I think back here. You see instantly it really adds a really nice textured stain. And it kind of gathers up in those edges, those corners. There's one area in particular, I see it, it's right here. So I want some, some grime to settle in here and I don't want it to be airbrushed. It'll look a little bit too mechanical that way. But you get a real nice organic weather down and grime settling into cracks and things when you use pastels. So that's what that looks like, just like that. Then when I'm happy with this, I'm going to do one side at a time. When I'm satisfied, I'm going to hit this down with a little bit of clear coat and move on to the other side. And then I see a big dark stand. There's one photo that shows a little bit of this little edge over here and it looks to be really dark. And that's all pastel. See how organic that looks? Here maybe. See already in just a few strokes I've got that, that, this. Before I start the fine detailing and some of the staining and the cables and wires and mic and all that, I'm using some crystal clear, matte clear, just to seal this whole deal. There's a little detailing here with yellow. <sighs> Pretty strange, but it's there. There's a little bit there, and there's a whole bunch kind of rimming the outside of this. It's real subtle across here. There's a few areas of this decal that look like they're kind of rubbed away, and I'm going to mimic that with mixing a little bit of that base tone and just making it look like some of this got scraped away. The rest of this is really straightforward and easy. This is a chin strap I made out of webbing. This is the mic that will attach back here. And what else was there? And uh, cables. Okay, man, I think this is just about done. I'm going to do a little bit more shading on this. I'm going to accentuate some of these shadows just a tiny bit. Maybe a little bit back here. I want to touch up these wires. And I think that'll do it for this, this build-up. And that wraps it up for the blue leader buildup. This was a pretty simple buildup. It's got minimal greeblies, uh, minimal weathering. This is blue two. There's blue leader, blue five, and blue nine. If you like the content of this video, make sure that you like and subscribe and feel free to share. Make sure that you check out the Instagram, Facebook, and website related to these projects. Thanks for watching.